<laughs> and today and till tomorrow. <laughs> so I need to leave here no later than 20 minutes of 3 to be back in their hometown, which is about 35 minutes from here, to be there when the school bus arrives. For some reason was thinking, I don't know what I was Next agenda item is approving the minutes, and I have another apology to make now because <laughs> Chris, actually, I was talking to Bob both about of us, it. We both missed it. We both missed this. In the minutes, Bob nicely pointed out to us there is an item at under the next meeting saying an item on protective services for seniors is requested by Chris Simone for the next month. Both Pam and I missed that. We did not get it on the agenda. We apologize to you. I Put it under old business as just a, a discussion as of, of last month's minutes. Chris Simone reported on the elder abuse from the seminar he attended this month. You added that to the yeah. minutes. I okay. added it to the it'll so be, it'll be in the minutes. So it's just going to go under old business after we finish the rest. He's of the going to add that statement to the old business in the okay. minutes from last month, as well as we can discuss elder abuse today. We just can't vote on anything to do with it. So perfect. I apologize to you for that. We, we try very hard. I rely on the minutes a lot to, you know, plan, to look at what we need to follow up on to see what's old business, et cetera, et cetera. So. Okay. But anyway, it happens. So. I think the only adjustment to the what's in the minutes then would be, if, if you feel it's necessary, we also just stated the elder abuse hotline number. Oh, yes, you did. Again. Could you give it to Bob yeah. to put in the minutes? I, I don't think, well, Put it, I think it's up you want, but they it's it's completely up to you. It was it, it, we accomplished it by stating it during the meeting. We should we should. It was, all, it was also in the in the bulletin. Well, what we said it we, is, we but I get it out. I think the information is valid and important, and the more places yeah. it's printed, the we might catch one more person that might happen to pick up on it. So oh, no just, harm to add it to the stating minutes. it for the record. We're communicating it to the audience, which is which was the point. Right. So um, so it's. Just wanted to make sure we had the same one, elder abuse hotline number. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Thank you. 800-922-2275. Again, that's 800-922-2275. That's, that's seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You have to press number four, I believe, when you call into it, which is, which is why we have to be careful around communicating it, because, you know, you, you call into it and it's, it gives you a menu, and there are three things which proceed. It's very important, number four, which is where you get to the elder abuse. So you can Somebody, have, yeah. have to dial in the 800-922-2275. What is it now? It's dial number, give, dial four, press Give four. me the number again. One. 800-922-2275. Wait a minute. One, eight, hundred. Are you testing me? Go ahead. One, eight, hundred. <laughs> Nine two two. Nine two two. Two two seven five. Two two seven five. Okay. Press thank four. You. It's, in the, it's now in the middle. Then press four when they answer. And I put it in the December broadcaster as a boxed item. Right. Just very short, very to the point. I. It is an important topic, and that's an important number for people to be aware of. So, and the more we can get it out and help in that process, I think it's important. So and I also think. More that they have to make the call. Mm -hmm. Could be, and I think 
in general. It's a great topic. I think there's lots of things we can talk about with it. So, all right. Other minutes? Are we okay with having a motion to accept the minutes as amended? Second. Chris made the motion. Jean. Oh, okay. Got plenty of seconds. <laughs> Jean read her hand up first. <coughs> okay, let's move right into old business. Update on the kitchen project. And I'll just point out to everybody that included in your packet is the latest contact sheet, which I sent to you also, those of you with email by email as well, which is phone numbers, et cetera. Um, I had a meeting with the architect and with two members of the Permanent Municipal Building Committee. I also talked with Carl Bryant, who's our project manager for the PMBC and that project today. And we seem to be moving along without any catches right now. Um, he's working on the, the architect is working on the design. And as soon as I know anything more, I'll let you know. But just to reiterate, once he turns in that design, it has to be accepted by PMBC, then it goes out for bid, it's out for 30 days before they even get the bids back. So. Are we paying 30,000? Is that the one we're paying 34? I don't think so. No, I think we're paying 12,000 to this guy. Okay. To do the, uh, um, the, what it is is a series of drawings that are sufficient to be able to have contractor, a GC, make a bid. Okay. Well, so we that's don't have a firm date yet. It's going to be close. Okay. That's progress, I did, though. Well, I did talk to um, uh, Sharon Mercurio over in Acton. They just redid their soup to nuts completely. Uh, the only thing they didn't do was change out their floor, and they were only closed for three weeks. Wow. So I'm thinking that the estimate that we got of three to four months might be a bit extreme. <laughs> Yeah, it seems that way. Mm -hmm. Well, we're at Acton, and we'll cut to time for Mary to give a report. Here is a statement on the Acton Smith Coolen Senior Center is their name now since April. I don't believe any of us knew that. Ooh. Acton COA. Can you believe it? Okay. Well, we can when you Smith Coonan. You we can get that in the minutes when you give your report. Oh, I thought I'd, maybe if I squeezed it well, in now, I not, wouldn't have to. Ha, they we're talking really about our kitchen update right now. Okay. All right. Thank you, you though. When we walk through that, so, you know, it's, th it's 30, once the design is done, so we can put the bid documents together, and then the bid documents go out, and those that made bid get 30 days with them, and then they come back, and then there's some process, which I imagine you have a the number MBC of goes over them, yeah. And select and review, and then, then, the vendor is selected, but they may not be able to start right away. And, and so, you know, you go down the series of variables, we're out a ways. Oh, yeah. The question becomes, and of course, I know we're already working on it, the, where the, the backup facility would be. Congregational churches will be up in May um, as an as a the, estimate. That's their projected. Yeah. yeah. And Pam, I think, has, I, if I recall, recall correctly, she has explored some options. I've, I've explored some options. Right. I've got a couple of potentials. The difficulty is it's really hard to get anyone to commit when I can't give them a start date. Right. Yeah. That's understandable. And actually, we have no control over it as a board, technically. Right. So, But we need to keep our awareness up, I think, to be able to try to do whatever we can to help expedite things, if there is anything we can do. We have talked about some options. We've actually approached a couple of places. We've gotten a couple of firm no's, and uh, we've got a couple of maybes. I think he will be getting getting the design in and the bid, you know, out. And then once we get that far, we're going to hear within 30 days. We're going to know that. We have a time frame then once the bids do go out, right? There's a 30-day window. Only to receive responses right. to the Right, and then program. they have to make their decision as to yeah. which bid, and then we'll know a little bit more. And then and I had a... she can plan a little bit more at that point. Well, I also had a meeting with Minuteman Senior Services uh, Food Service, Peg Magola, and with Gail, our, Gail Dalton, our um, kitchen manager. And we do have a plan B in reserve. 
if all else fails, which will literally be having Meals on Wheels brought in, will be eaten in the multi-purpose room with throwaway utensils um, or some other room. Yeah. Um, but that is definitely like the last resort. Yeah, Plan Z. Thing. Let's call it Plan Z. If you're looking Z. for places, there's a possibility <coughs> that we could use the Baptist Church too. So that's one of the, that's one of the maybe. So the, the concern I have there is people pulling in and out of there at lunchtime. The Meals on Wheels drivers. Oh. My, my concern is not with them pulling in and out. My concern is we're not having enough parking. But other than that, <laughs> is there a concern? I, I know at first the Congregational Church we thought was too far out from our timeline. But now our timeline is, and their timelines are. Which so is exactly why I'm not committing to anybody because yeah. who knows? Mm -hmm. They could. We have they, too many variables right now. Yeah. There's too many balls in the air. I, so I think what I was getting at is if we need that to be one of our potentials, then that we have to put a letter to their church council requesting it. Well, to again, it, it, it won't do me any good to ask until they are done because if they really are going with, for May. That it's highly likely that we'll get a date that doesn't match up with that. But if we start to get close to them being done and we still haven't started, absolutely. Okay. I'll make a request to them. Yeah. That's good information, though. Thank you, yeah. Chris. We've already talked to St. Anne's, and they said no. Oh. Yeah. Okay. The stairs there are no good at St. Anne's huh? for people. That wasn't the reason. Yeah. They're what? Stairs. There's a lot of stairs going downstairs to the base. You don't have, you don't have access? To, you don't have... Elevator? Any, Not a direct any, any outside from the kitchen, no. That, to the downstairs? Wow. Mm. With all the new renovations they did, they didn't do that? Uh -huh. Okay. All right, are we ready to move on? I think. Moving on from the uh, kitchen project to update on town meeting, which is Wednesday night. I know it's come rather quickly, yeah. and mm -hmm. um, in the dark, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is going to be dark. And so, I'm hopeful that um, the whole board will show up, and we can have the stamina to. We're on the agenda before, as I understand it, before the turf. We are articles three, four, and five. Right, which is before the turf discussion. Yeah, which is six and seven. And that probably will take a lengthy period of time, I'm guessing. But so it's nice that we're on the agenda prior to that. I just am offering that to all of you for encouragement to go, <laughs> because you might be able to go and then. If you have to leave, you could leave then, but you know it would be over. However, don't want to, I don't want to take from the turf discussion either, but that's important and valid for those involved. So, however, one of the uh, parts of our article is a two thousand dollar water tower or water something, and there are people who are not happy about that. So we, I'm a little bit concerned that uh, the three issues, even though they're covered by funds may be debated and then who knows what will happen. So we do need the support. Are you talking about um, the needs assessment? You're talking oh, about the needs assessment? Thing. No. Uh, I Another don't know what article. It's, yes, I think it is an easy. It's the same one as the needs assessment. There's also um, a $200,000 or something. It's all supposed to be covered by the, the unused snow and re snow right. removal funds. However, that may not deter people. They might just say why are we spending two hundred thousand and then they might say why are we suspending two hundred thirty but why are we spending two hundred thirty five we're we're lumped together with two other items under article three the first one is the master plan update and they're asking for thirteen thousand dollars to be appropriated to that they have some money already so they're just supplementing that money then comes our needs assessment for thirty five thousand and then I think what you're talking about is the fuel replacement, right. the fuel, fuel facility fuel, replacement. Fuel station replacement right. 248000 and all this is coming out of excess snow and ice expenses that weren't used last year. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but we do need the support of seniors, is what yes, I'm getting definitely. at. Yeah, we all have the right to speak from the floor as an individual resident. So. And all three of those were supported by FinCom, Board of Selectmen, Planning Board, and of course, our board. Another interesting article is the one for a hundred thousand for the study for that chemical field. That's that's, that's another. We said that's different. That's, that's later. That's, that's later. later. That's yeah. what I said. That's the turf. It's, yeah. it's yeah. article. 
10 or 14 or something. In case like that. you go home, that's important. Six stay there. Seven, I think. We'll say it on the <laughs> where, where Six and seven. The town meeting? Yeah. It's in the middle school. It's in the middle school, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I stop and think about that myself. <laughs> where you went to vote. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. okay. Any other discussion about that? About the uh, town meeting? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'll be in the bulletin or not. Because well, of you are you I if I am, I will let you know. Thank you, Chris. We've told you when you came on this board, you have to put everything else aside. <laughs> work, the, the only thing worse than work travel is work travel on a day or two's notice, which is what may occur this week. Uh -oh. Well, you got to do what you got to do for work. You do. All right. I think are we done with the town meeting? Okay. And we have an update on the board appointment, which is obviously um i think well known to everybody but officially just that the selectmen did appoint mary hunt a week ago um tonight mm -hmm. uh, as our 11th member and i did deliver the orientation booklet i got it to her through her husband so um she received it friday and she um as we said is not feeling well today and so not could not make this meeting but so we welcome her. <coughs> yes. And we have. Well, we're around. We're, that's next. We're coming up to that. I, I recall. <laughs> I recall. Yeah. Patty expressed interest in the needs assessment subcommittee, which is really exciting. Yep. Bob, we, yeah. Bob. Yeah. You'll have to record. recruit her. <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, that's so. Dibs. All right. <laughs> so that's the update on the appointment. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. And Barbara, now okay. we have the board orientation manuals, which were requested for all of you. We now have Chris has one, yeah. except he does not have this. Um, just so that let me get this piece of it out of the way. This, okay. these are three handouts that came that uh, Jean and Susan Dunn got from the conference that they went to from with Emmett a couple of weeks, what three or four weeks ago now, and we included them in the manuals. So you don't have this in your manual. Okay. All right, so would you pass that down to Chris? And we just put it in the back after. Right, we, put, we added it. I did not yeah. change, we did not change the table of contents, but it goes in the very back section of the book. Yeah. Uh, all, the, all the council members are receiving this then? <laughs> it's yeah. in their new books. Yeah. We're okay. going to give, in the current board members, we put this just to give you a little perspective here. Mm -hmm. When Bob, the membership subcommittee came up with this and the board approved it, we gave them out to new board members as they came on board, and you were the first one to get one, actually. And then Jean and Susan, and now Mary, or Patty, has hers. The current, the board members, the other board members did not get one, yeah. nor did Pam. So Barbara and I, in the last month, since our last meeting, did make up more books, oh, cool. and we have given one to Pam, and we have the rest of them to give out today. What I would like to request is, though, that everybody keep their book up to date when things are handed out at the meeting, and it's, there's, you know, it specifically says, this is to replace something that's in your book, then make sure you replace it. Try to keep them current. And then when you do step down from the board as a member, return the book. So we're all asking that where you will remind everybody periodically. So. And already so, you have to replace the. Um, and yes, everybody always has to replace their own ta uh, you membership. Know the, uh, the members, the membership page. You so all you get it. Today. You can you can print it. You got it today. You yeah. can stick it in Louise. your book. Thank you. So this is just. Whoops. Hmm? Wait a minute. Kmart. <laughs> yeah, these are Kmart special. Bob pocket books. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Be reimbursed, Mary. Mary. Thank you. So, right. so and we have and this is for George. And would you pass this one down? Yep. Yeah. We'll keep them together. That's all. Who's this one? George. And Give Barry. it to Barbara. George and Barry both need to get one here, so we have them ready. Well, the first page I opened up to needs to be changed. So, What's and that? as we add things to it. We will probably have that's to change the report. Uh, annual report. That's Unhanced the director's page, annual report, so, and that was last year. Oh, okay. And that's <coughs> the way things were then when that report oh, was written. Okay. 
Thank you. So, okay, and then you will have to replace this mm. right here because you were just given a new one in here with Mary um, Hunt on oh, here. Okay. You need to take this out and put your new one in. Okay. All right, any questions on that? It's just that you, everybody needs to be on the same page. And so, literally. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> so we should have accomplished that. <laughs> so, and that was old business. We had had a request for that. And so that's done, taken care of, I think. Okay, so now, now is the time for Chris to report on the old abuse. Under old business, right? If Chris would, you did attend, and I know I'm, I know Pam will address the elder abuse program in her report, I'm sure. But Chris also attended the elder abuse program that Pam had. I don't know if anyone else did. I was aware that Chris was there. I know I didn't go, and I asked him if he could just update the board a little and inform us, keep us informed, because it's good to know what's going on. So if you don't mind, that would be great to do that. This was on the 30th, and uh, we had Devlin Farmer, Pamela had set this up um, from the Neshoba Valley Elder Law Project through a grant. Um, and the topic was somewhat general about elder abuse and also other uh, senior legal type issues, including Healthcare, and so it was a pretty broad-ranging conversation. Very interesting. Um, the young man, the attorney who spoke, ended up. Th th those in attendance wanted to focus a little bit more on health and finance than elder abuse, and so he catered to the audience, and that they, wow. they came. Um, so we didn't actually discuss elder abuse all that much, though I think he is on the agenda again coming up, but it was it was nice, it's informative, that's a, that's a nice, you know, it's obviously a good resource that we've tapped into. Um, so I appreciate Pamela setting that up. So and that's, I'll, okay. Yeah, that's my, my brief update. All right, but it's kind of still old business, and you have an interest in elder abuse, and I'm, I'm yeah. thinking it seems to me that, like, correct me if I'm wrong, my perception is that this is something that people are fearful of. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't want to report that they have, are being abused or they think they might be, but they might not feel confident in that. So I'm guessing you know more about it than I think than maybe I do at this point. It yeah. would be important to figure out a way to get information out. And I think Kim yeah. started that whole process in a very nice way. So I, mean, I want to throw that out, and it, it, you could. I think that's it. I think that's exactly it. It's awareness. If if we structure an awareness campaign, it won't be the first. Pamela and the team have worked and communicated in numerous ways and formats. Right. The different components. What what is elder abuse? You know, the different components. How do you identify it? How do you recognize it? How do you report it? Um, the resources available. That 800 number. You know, we mentioned, for instance. Um, the fact that it's confidential, some of these key aspects that can, that we just need to continually communicate, and uh, that was what I hoped to get onto the agenda and for us to talk about was the next rev. And Pamela's already a couple steps ahead of us because she's got in the upcoming newsletter reference to it. Um, but it would be great. This is where I don't know. I'm, you know, exactly where we are in the awareness campaign. So it would be great just to get an update on that. And then talk about what can we do next? Is it flyers at some of the upcoming events? You know, how else? You know, do we need to schedule a? Uh, you know, maybe maybe schedule an event where, you know, we can talk. Well, about I it. think that's not our job to schedule programs. Quite frankly, yeah. I mean, I think the, and Pam. Well, we're making a recommendation to her. Right, we yeah. are making recommendations to Pam, and obviously. Two or three of us kind of have gotten have, have expressed our feelings that it is a topic that needs attention. Yeah. So, do we have thoughts and ideas in addition to what Pam has already done, very nicely done? You know, as far as getting it out and starting the ball with having a program. The only other thing I just want to add quickly, and then I'm, I'll be quiet. I promise. The um, I got this nice from the Elder uh, Executive Office of Elder Affairs. They have this nice three-fold brochure. I've printed mine. They sent me this PDF. I've got two calls and more than that emails into them asking them, is there a pile of these around someplace at the state that they can give us so that we don't have to spend you know, our resources creating them? But they've got this nice brochure. I can pass this around. 
already about awareness of elder abuse, the issues, the hotline. If they give us a stack of these already printed, we could save some money and then just hand them out, perhaps. And we, we don't have them by any chance, do we? Do we have any? Uh, well, we Tina? probably do. I mean, minute and brochures that they give to us that we have in several places always gives the um, Elder Protective Service hotline number and mm -hmm. where to contact them. And we are in frequent contact with them and make referrals to them mm -hmm. on a regular basis. And they would probably provide us with some good education and come out and do another um, in service on it for those who are uh, interested. Yeah, but they were here in February. Right, right. They were just so, here then. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't you let Tina and I get our heads together and, okay. and we can come back with some suggestions. We'd need some help from the board to uh, probably make some of this stuff happen. Great. Great. That would be great. I'm yes, Mary. I'm just curious. The hospitals, the ER, and the physicians, they see a lot of that. They would be reporting to a different source than the ordinary person. How, where do they go? No, they report to that same, same 800 same number way. or if it's during business okay. hours and it concerns a Littleton person, it would be the Minute and Senior Services Protective Service Department. They do the same. Yeah, yeah. They would, all the hospitals okay. that would have a Littleton person they're concerned about would do that. Our police and fire to, excuse me, department sir, just do that also. There's something yeah. urgent. They keep okay. calling. I'm sorry. You know, I should also point out that all of you, as members of the Council on Aging Board, are mandatory reporters, which means that if you think that there is any sort of um, elder abuse going on, you are required by law to call and to make a report on that. Nursing this, homes, who checks on them? Well, that's outside of our bailiwick. They have their own um, auditors that come in and the... Um, uh, JCHA comes in and works with them but if you witness something that you think is elder abuse or someone tells you about something you are required by law to call this number and report it okay. oh and the other thing about um, uh, Devlin Farmer and the Elder Law Project, which is out of legal aid, uh, he came back last Friday for, to do individual one-to-ones with people, and he was completely booked. So I've asked him to come again, and he's going to come again after the first of the year. He set up half-hour appointments with people, and he was booked from 10 o'clock until um, almost 2 wow. with meeting with people. So people did have things that they wanted to talk to him about, <laughs> but I think they were reluctant to talk about them in a group setting. I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think so. That's why at one point, when it wasn't elder abuse as much as the, as the topic, it was getting into financial planning and the like, there were only two or three people left. And so that's why I left, because I thought maybe it would make, it's one less person listening, because mm. they seem to get, you know, sensitive. And, and, and that's, a, that's part of all of this. It's, yeah. you know. But it was a good entree yeah, so for people to kind of hear that he was them. here, and then to have him come back and do the sit-down meetings with people. Very good. It's a process, I think, that we're embarking on that, you know, we'll have to keep, I think, visiting and just keep it up there. Yep. So, Like I said, let Tina and I get our heads together and we'll make some suggestions Great. of something that could happen. Okay. Yes, George. Uh, Chris, yes, did you say this is three pages? This is just two pages. I think that they emailed that to me. Um, I think... I think in reality it's a threefold brochure, so it's printed on each side. Oh yeah. And then folded, you know, threefold. I think that's what the state has. So I just wanted, I just wanted to say that. So I. The trifold. Yeah. yeah one piece, no, one piece of paper. This is one piece of paper here. I mean, this would be one piece. Right. Yes. According to what this is. Yes. Threefold paper. Yeah. I think it's. So I think it's something like it prints like this, and, you and fold then it. they probably fold it into three. Oh, yeah. Come on, George. And, uh, no, no, I thought it was three pages, David. <laughs> I understood it would be three pages. That's yeah. why I'm asking. <laughs> but it's nice. It's nice information and the way they organized it. It would be wonderful if they just give us a stack of these. I know we're three, four. Well, they should. I'll keep calling them. I'll keep calling them. What's that number again? I want to report her. There's <laughs> elder abuse here. I saw that. I'm a witness. His name is Thank Devlin. He's, All bigger, right. he's bigger than you, though. He's trying to hear something down here. All right. Devlin, D-E-V-L-I-N, Farmer. That's easy. 
F A R M E R. That one sounds just like it sounds. Yeah, yeah I stumbled over the dev one as well. Camera. Yeah. <coughs> that's even better. All right. Well, we have a we have a an emerging new focus here George, too. So that's a good. In today's thing. papers, there's a a new sheet for the uh, you, that you have to replace the board members. Oh yeah, I've seen that. I've seen yeah, yeah Barbara's just catching George up with his yeah. manual. Okay, so. Thank you. All right. I think we're done with old business, are we? Everyone okay with that? Oh, that's for you. Oh, that's for me? Oh, okay. We are asking, George, you weren't here when I gave them out, but I will catch you up. I did. We did ask that when things are handed out at the meeting and it's called to your attention that it's to replace something in the book, please replace it. And then when people step down from the board, we're asking that they return the books so that we will can keep rotating them I'm through members. Keep mine. I want the history. <laughs> <laughs> Get that number again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So new business. We um, the membership subcommittee, who currently is comprised of Barbara Cam and myself, who are open to have new members join us. Um, we are about to take on the project of writing up job descriptions for the officers of the board. There was a job, if you recall, last year you approved a job description for board members, which is in your book. And we wanted to complete that by writing up job descriptions for the officers. Because is that the same as guide? Because you've already given us something, and it was titled guide for board members. No, no, no. no. A job description is, these are the responsibilities for the chair of the Littleton Council on Aging as the board sees them. Okay. Now, we're going to write one for the chair, the vice chair, and the clerk. We don't have a, or a secretary, however we want to how refer to that position. Yes, George. Madam Chair, I thought we had that spelled out in the rules and regulations. We don't. Rules and regulations are not job descriptions. Listen, I, I, I know what a job description is, but what I'm saying, you have stated in here what the responsibilities are of each office here. And I think the job descriptions take that. Are 6-2, 6-3, six and 6-4. Six right, it does. What, what the chairperson will do, what the vice chairperson shall do, and what the secretary shall do. Correct. That's a job description. That is the I don't know how much more you can add. I was going to say the same thing. I, I don't know how much, if I may, I, I don't know how much more you can add to this here in terms of saying responsibility of the person because this was sort of kind of uh, narrowed down to what okay. really they was doing. So I, I, Well, that's uh, a very good point, I think, because I don't know that Barbara and I really thought that through, but maybe we ought to look at that before we <laughs> make more work for ourselves. Uh, that, that comes from the original uh, uh, right. correct it's minutes and the, I mean the original uh, rules and regulations okay. and it's, it states what the purpose of the three are. If you I want think to why don't we, why don't, right, I, I'm familiar with that, but I just hadn't thought about that at the time and I had in the, the perception of it being all that we needed. So why don't we just take a look at that and um, uh, figure it. Yeah, if we come up with something else, and we will get back to you. How's that? Because thank you for pointing that out to us. Mm. So, um, you did good. abuse report. <laughs> now we'll put our heads together on that and go from there. Any other comments about that? Well, the only comment I would say is don't create what's already there if it's there. Don't add to it. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. Well, you might add to it a little bit if you can find something significant to add to it, but yeah. I would just simply say, you know, don't. Don't, don't make work for yourself. Yeah, don't make work for yourself. I hear that, and that's why I'm saying, well, maybe, you know, I better pay attention to what he's saying. George is wealth of knowledge, and. Uh, He's had a lot of experience with this, so we'll take another look at that. So, okay, are we ready to go to the reports? Wow, we're moving right along. Thank you. 
Friends update, Nancy. I think that's why she's here. That's why I'm here. Um, we have the hopefully you have a copy of our minutes from um, yeah. our October meeting. And we have a veterans luncheon coming up Wednesday. We have over 100 people coming. Uh, Neshoba Valley Technical High School is going to prepare, cook, serve, and clean up. So we hope everything works out well. And we're just going to have a lot of people there. We have a sign-up list. Veterans are free, and their spouses, yes, have to pay $5. And we have some music, and we have just a couple of surprises. Since we're on camera, I can tell you. Oh. So, um, you take us go, off. You take us off for a minute. Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, in December, we have something for the ladies, Color Me Scarves. A woman has been with us before. Her Sorry, name is Marilyn. What was that? Color Me Scarves. Um, then we are having a New Year's Eve party in January that we have an Elvis impersonator. He is the Elvis that was in the show with me that we had last spring. <coughs> um, then we have a Valentine's party, a St. Patrick's luncheon. Uh, we hopefully the what senior you? follies will happen again in April. I only have one sheet. Volunteers luncheon. So we have things planned from now until June. The things that are not on our events list are things that we're doing with the schools. Um, you might have noticed that the cafeteria was decorated for Halloween, and that was done by two third grade classes. Two third grade classes are coming, a different two grade, two third grade classes are coming in two weeks to decorate the diner for Thanksgiving. And then again for, uh, in December for the holiday season. Uh, they're coming two classes at a time. Last year they came six classes and it was quite exciting. <laughs> so this year it's just two at a time. Exciting, um, was that the word? <laughs> we're on camera. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And this is the third the third graders that are coming soon, they apologize because they were scheduled to come uh, two weeks before Thanksgiving, maybe it was even three weeks, and they had to change it for scheduling problems at their end. But we enjoy having them so much and the seniors enjoy coming to see what they've done. So anything they can do for us is more than welcome. We're also continuing to see if we can continue to do things with them in the spring. You know, uh, decorate with flowers. I, I will backtrack for a moment. One of the things they made were placements. And thank goodness they made too many because they were given to the seniors that were, had Meals on Wheels. And that was greatly appreciated. They were wonderful, those persons. Oh, so don't yes. forget the handicapped children. That, that will be more in my report. Oh, okay. Yeah, that will be okay. more in my, yeah. Then the Girl Scouts in, uh, contacted us in Littleton, um, a particular troop, and they were supposed to come and play bingo with the seniors on a particular day. And <laughs> we had to change that because that's when St. Anne's Church does bingo. Oh. And so it, it just wasn't going to work. And they could not reschedule it um, in November. December is very busy. So we're going to do that again with them in January or February. The International Club at the high school has a world language festival. They do it every other year. I am going to, Pam doesn't even know this yet. I'm going to involve myself with Pam. and. To advertise this to our seniors, um, but certain students make up um, cook foods from different countries: in Spain, Italy, France, Germany. And you know what month it's going to be in? Yes, March 26. Awesome. Plenty of time to plan. Yeah, it's in the evening. Um, I was hoping I could get them to come here, but we'll have to see what we can do. And. Um, 
I think. Oh, and then we have the uh, Parker School. Uh, Parker School that came last year. They are thinking of maybe coming back this year, but it's a different group of students. And I'm still waiting to hear on that. So our intergenerational program that we have with the um, uh, younger people in town, the students in town, has been working very, very well, extremely well. In fact, I just learned that in, in the no, uh, Barbara show for November, it's not on cable yet, but it will be any day. Barbara interviewed the seniors in the cafeteria to talk about how they like the decorations that the students made. And the third graders are waiting anticipatively <laughs> to see how we reacted. One student actually came to me and said, Mrs. Levine, I got permission to ask you, could you please video their faces so we could see how excited they are? <laughs> oh. so that was very, very sweet. And so I wasn't able to do it as requested, but we got close to it. And that's it for now. <coughs> I have thank one you. Question. Yes, thank you. I noticed when I came in today that there was a notice that our friends are going to have on Saturday and Sunday. Yes. Christmas decorations. Thank you. I forgot yeah. to mention that, yes. Um, the thrift shop is loaded with lots and lots of Christmas decorations. So we wanted to um, uh, sell as many as we could before the bazaar. It's going to be very inexpensive. It's going to be great. It's the Saturday and Sunday. This Saturday and Sunday. Is that the Sunday? Is it this Saturday? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, on the second floor, by the uh, from the, in the thrift shop area and Loving Stitches area, that hallway, from mm -hmm. 10 to 2. And what, 10 to? 10, 10 to 2. 10 to 2. Is it a sale? Yes. Yes. Can I? Yeah. I was pleased to see that. Mm. It's exciting. Could I just ask you to, I know, noticed here you have, you're talking mm. about a um, grant writer who's interested in working with you. Yeah. And perhaps Pam's going to address that also in her director's report, I think. But that's exciting. I think that's very exciting. Uh, she's going to be doing it and, you know, working towards helping to write grants. If I'll I'm, explain it. Okay. So Pam will explain it more in the, her director's okay. report. That's I exciting. I would like though. to call your attention to one item that's in the Friends Minutes. Mm -hmm. This board asked me to go to the Friends and find out who's providing the funding to mail the newsletter. Right. Yeah. Uh, it is an anonymous donor who has asked not to have their name revealed. It is not Bob Moran and has not been for several years. I thought it was the advertisers. We were getting it free. They don't pay for the mailing. Oh, oh, mailing. Oh, excuse me. Right. Excuse me. Excuse me to kick you. <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. That's very <coughs> comprehensive, and I think we are really ought to count our blessings for what a wonderful friends group we have. Mm -hmm. So yeah. active. It's, I think we probably have one of the most outstanding friends group of COAs groups in the state. I'm mean, thinking it's really wonderful all, all that they do. I so. think so. Thank yeah. you. All right, moving on. Budget reports. So you each received three pieces of paper, two with the mark of the regular budget and one with the, uh, I think you received the one with the cost of the, I don't see it here. The um, fund report, did you put fund report in? Yeah, I don't see it. There's nothing to look at a different one. Now, if you look at the mark budget uh, down under uh, the expenses, there's a supervisor expense, uh, and that uh, may change once Wednesday night is voted because there is a, 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 a piece from the article, uh, one of the articles that is going to remove the director's salary from the mark budget and put it up in so that her entire salary will go under the office budget. We'll make that adjustment uh, at the time. Uh, if it gets voted, and all of the funds that are going to mark the 68,000 that's coming to go to mark will be used to pay for drivers and uh, possibly the dispatchers' hours uh, that are coming from the 
generalized, uh, centralized dispatch office. Uh, but in any case, uh, that's going to be a change. But at the present time, these all agree, these all agree to the uh, money uh, as it is in the town uh, reports right now. Is there any question on any of them? It's pretty standard. I didn't think there was anything in different that I noticed. I apologize for the funds report not being printed out for you. Those of you with email received it by email as a .pdf file. Um, I must have overlooked it when I was Anybody doing the printing. Look at it, I have a copy here, and you have a copy too. Uh, the ones I gave you back. Oh, is it in there? Was this was uh, I don't recall. I right? so I kind of looked at it very quickly. Uh, was this uh, level funding? Yes. It was level funding. Yes, I had a discussion with Keith and um, and Bonnie, and it was very gently pointed out to me that we got a lot this year. We got uh, the kitchen project as a capital project. We um, uh, the town is going forward with taking the sixteen thousand that Mart was paying for my salary. They're going to cover that. We received ten extra hours for Tina to make her a forty-hour position um, and they were not being rough at all with this they were just pointing out that we'd been fortunate so and we'd gotten a lot anymore. and we're <laughs> and we're asking for the 35,000 which they're very confident will pass um, so I was comfortable with passing through a level funded budget to them oh, well I that's mean, what they you're, asked you're, for. You're it's level funded but it's really more because they they've done very well by it yeah well you know I, I madam chair I, I think that uh, we may have receive uh, a bit this year but it's well overdue well, that's oh absolutely so you I know that's why we got so much it's yeah. it's good that they uh you know gave us what they gave us i'm not i'm not griping by that i'm just i'm just wondering was it you know was level funding or was they going to be so graceful to give us a little extra <laughs> yeah. you never know yeah, yeah you never know unless you, you ask that's <laughs> absolutely right. So it, it's a great start, I think, yeah. you know. And regarding budget, um, I'm scheduled to meet with FinCom and the Board of Selectmen Saturday um, at 3 p.m. Bob, you often attend that. Um, of course, they often blow the schedule, so as soon as I know firmly what the time is, I'll give you a call, but right now they're saying 3 p.m. In the uh, community room at the police station. This meeting with FinCom, is, is that basic going in justifying the budget? Um, uh, I, I had one meeting with FinCom in which we talked about the items that were on the warrant, and this is the total budget. This is to justify the total budget. Now, I'm not asking for anything. It's all level funded, so this will probably be quite perfunctory. Last year, when I went in, I was asking for things like Tina's hours, um, I was trying to get them to consider the Sudbury option, um, so it took a little longer. Didn't get any of it, but it took a little longer. The one thing that always struck me so kind of strange was that when the town picked up the budget for Tina for the 10 hours, I, I don't understand why they didn't pick up the two hours that the friend has been uh, uh, supporting. Uh, we didn't ask for it. No, no, no. Let me finish. You're abusing me here. <laughs> I, 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 I've always wondered that uh, why, I mean, I, I know that the friends, they, they contribute tremendously to the COA as, as a whole as far as funding coming in, which we don't get funding from the town for a lot of the stuff that, I mean, if you look at this calendar that they've been putting on with activities, there's a lot of money that the friends has been throwing at these programs here. And I just always wondered why, I mean, it was only two hours. I just couldn't figure out why when they, when we went in and said, you need to pick up her, her, her salary and move it to uh, 40 hours. Uh, I don't understand why, why the two hours wasn't taken in consideration uh, and free to friends of that. I, I, I've always had That's a little a bit point. of concern for that when we was fighting it because that would have been one of the things if I went to the input on this here uh, that would have been one of the things that I would have said to FinCom 
why can't you pick up the two hours? I mean, what, what's two more hours when the town truly should be funding that position without mm -hmm. support coming from somewhere else? Well, maybe down the road. I mean, we know that Tina needs more help already. So who knows where we yeah. may go with that, because that's a good point, too, I think. We didn't ask yeah. so. for the 2,000 extra. But. <clears throat> Well, but we do not push really. that this year. Right. Okay. I think so, too, but yeah, yeah, I that's just a, an opinion. It's a good one. Yeah. It's a good one. I mean, what happens if the, I always think about what happens to friends for whatever reason. Oh, yeah. You know, if they funds started running slow, you know, coming in with donations, I mean, you know, they have to make a determination what they're going to do with their funding. So I, I well, you got a question mm -hmm. over there. Yes. I also have the same question, George. Oh. And I asked our treasurer, Tony Jesneski, excuse me, uh, since the town approved the extra hours, did the friends still have to pay the two? And he didn't know the answer, so he researched it and then got back to the board that we just discussed last week. Um, and yes, we are responsible. And I personally did not know why what happened as to why the two hours didn't get put through. Okay, let me, let me explain. We asked for 10 additional hours. Tina's salary from the town has always been 20 hours. That's the town budget. We asked for an addition to the town budget of 10 hours. We might, maybe we should have asked for 12, we didn't. We asked for 10. Okay. Because we get eight from the, from the grant and two from the, from the friends. Um, because we wanted the we wanted her to have extra hours years ago, and and yeah. so we did that. So we did get the ten hours from the from the town, um, and uh, that's why you're you're still responsible because we wanted to have a forty hour week, and we were arguing for a full time forty hour week, but that was on the assumption that eight hours would come from the grant and two hours would come from the grants, and now thirty instead of twenty would come from okay. the town. It's money well spent. Thank well, you, Tina. Where does yeah, the grant come from? State. It comes from uh, Elder Affairs. Oh. And we use part of it for that because it's now more than, than the eight, eight hours. And part of it we've used for the... Um, drivers. What? We were using for the wellness coordinator this year. We're wellness using it for drivers. Yeah. And using it for, on the drivers now okay. on the map, on the map service? Okay. How long have we had that grant? Been coming for years. Fifty you know? years, maybe. Correct. And they always want us to pay back more. They give us an assessment, and it, uh, but the, we, we, they always want more back in assessment too. But we don't do it. We try and fight them off. I thought the assessment was per senior citizen. Well, and it keeps rising. It does. There you are. Mm -hmm. We've always pleaded poverty. <laughs> called the formula grant. You yes, may have heard it referred to as the yes, formula grant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which it's a formula that the state uses to provide funding to all the cities and towns right. based on um, population, elder population. Okay. All right. Thank you, Bob, for that lengthy report. We came in a little involved with, but thank you. It was <laughs> pertinent information. So. Uh, I think we're ready to move on, are we, to the director's monthly report? Um, so you have the, the director's report. It is two-sided to save paper. Again, statistics are up on everything. Um, those of you who were at the wellness fair know that we had a really good time there. We had 41 vendors. There were at least 125 residents that circulated. Um, they did 92 flu shots compared to 36 last year. Uh, Neshoba is very happy with that. Um, we had great demonstrations, Tai Chi, Zumba, uh, and Laura Blair from Concord Healthcare Center provided lunch for us. Um, they just recently were renovated and they're really trying to um, help people to understand that as a short-term rehab facility they are available and I was there last Thursday for an open house yeah, and the place looks fantastic they did a, a super job and one of the things I like best about it is uh, the hallways are really wide yes oh, nice. it doesn't have a nursing home feel at all it's right across the street from Emerson and may I add something Pam 
What I couldn't get over was the size of the uh, patient rooms. Mm -hmm. They're compared to other nursing homes. They're really very, very comfortable. Well, it always has been a rehab facility. It's one half of the building is them, and the other half is uh, doctors' offices. Um, but very, just seem to be really nicely appointed. Lots of space, and they're very eager to get uh, short-term care people there. People um, coming out after hip replacements, et cetera. I'll just I uh, helped her. Jean and I did. Um, you were there also, and uh, oh, and Ellie Stetson. But she was very gracious, the gal from Laura. Laura, yep. very wonderful and very gracious. And she, um, it was a wonderful lunch that they provided. What was it? Well, it was, uh, somebody told me it was Roach Brothers. Well, yes. they ordered it from Roach Brothers. Yeah, they ordered it. But, but it was compliments it. of that facility. No, definitely, yeah. Yep. But they just obtained the sandwiches from Roach Brothers. Yep. Oh. Right. Yes. Uh, just, a, just a comment, too. I work Friday night and Saturday for Pam with the vendors. I have never seen a group of people who were so friendly and so willing to come and so excited about uh, being a part of this. Uh, they really enjoyed themselves, but they also, you know, have a lot of information that they could provide. And there might be some of those vendors who we could use for individual programming for things too, Pam, so uh, uh, that we're not using because they had all kinds of stuff. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I'd like to have them do a full body massage. Uh, <laughs> Actually, you know, Shirley Jenner was there at the fair doing free shoulder massages, right. and she, this morning was her morning. She volunteers for us for two hours doing shoulder massages for seniors for free. Well, I personally have to share something. I have, ha I had 10 years experience with, uh, programs such as you put on a fair, and I felt I did a good job. But your fair was absolutely outstanding. Thank you. With, the, with the, all the very people and the friendliness that was there, and the uh, flu clinic, I was amazed at how many children were driving mm -hmm. to have their yep. shots. It was outstanding. Yeah. Just keep it up. Just keeps growing. That's I was glad the nice to thing about it, yes. The, the age range of people who uh, attended. George. Madam Chair, to the director. I had a, a, a couple of people that were seen it as, on those flu shots that no Shobo was providing, I mean, I know I read in the paper in some places they said, you know, bring you a shot record if you have one, or bring you a medical card. Uh, were they charging the seniors for those flu shots? My understanding is that the shots are free to the senior, but when possible, they do a charge back to either Medicare or to your insurance company. For example, I'm not over 65. And I brought in my insurance card. They made copies of it. They will apply to see if they can get some reimbursement for that. Okay. But they didn't charge me anything, and they didn't charge yeah. anybody anything. I think that's well, what I told do. the people that that just me uh, abuse again here. Uh, <laughs> that uh, I time. thought it was. I thought it was free, you know, but I also had seen where they were saying bring your medical card in and so forth. And I know over at CBS that uh, it costs you over there. Yeah, there's no copay. Um, where possible, they do try to get a reimbursement. It's definitely in their best interest to try to get herd immunity by getting as many people vaccinated as possible. And the flu has already started. And they they go out to a lot of places. I know they go to Loaves and Fishes. They have a they've had sessions there, and people, again, if they if they have an insurance, you know, um, then they present the card. But otherwise, I think people do get the shot. Now this year, they put on uh, a couple extra days on providing flu shots to the citizens in Littleton, didn't they? Well, we ran our annual flu clinic here in the building. That was on the 14th. Then we followed up with the 25th and then I believe there was a third one that was done at, at one the of the school. schools yeah, yeah to try school. to get as many of the kids as possible well we alone oh I'm sorry Bob go ahead the only thing I would comment on that was that uh, I had a problem with they, they did not provide the senior flu shots and, and it no. was highly advertised that the seniors should all get the four shot we, we, we went to the doctor and yeah. got the four shot flu shot uh, and I think that that's something that somebody needs to consider. I mean, you know, it, it was all paid by Medicare, but it really, 
is a superior shot for those over 65. And, and I went back and forth with Neshoba Nursing about that in advance of the flu clinic, and it was never made clear to me why they did not have the other one available. It just was clear that that was not available. They weren't going to be giving that out. Maybe there's more risk to it, so they were having people go to their doctors to get that. I don't know whether CVS was doing the four, four, four it's got four, four vaccines in it. Right. Well, four different foods. One thing I would like to point out, if you look on the back of your director's report, um, we did 514 rides in the month of October. That is an all-time high. Um, and 69 different people utilize the bus. That also is an all-time high. Um, the dispatch people are working very, very hard to squeeze every person in, and the drivers are driving all day, every day, two vans out there on the road. Um, transportation is so important to get people to what they need. And it's only going to increase, I think, now with the point yeah. coming, starting now, you know, that process is, has started. So if you look back at July fiscal year 2013, 163, and we're now at 514, yeah. that's a huge growth. Thank you, Pam. With no change in staff. There was something that you had asked me that was going to be part of the director's report. And the grant. Uh, oh, it was oh, the, the grant, yes. The grant. So I was approached by a senior tax worker, uh, Bonnie uh, Weinigan. Weine Weinigan, right. I couldn't remember if it was Winnigan or Weinigan, um, who her profession was grant writer, and she had worked primarily with vets and disabled veterans. Um, but she wanted to provide to us that same kind of service. So she is a senior tax worker. She has been working with me. And the first grant, the first viable grant that she located was one from the Griswold people who have the uh, home care and um, uh, assisted living facilities, I believe. Um, there's a couple North Shore. It, it's a, a chain, a very large uh, organization. Uh, but the catch on the grant was that it could not be awarded to a municipal entity. Uh -huh. It could only be awarded to a 501c3. Or 513c? Which, which are you? That's true. C3 or That's true. 3C? Well, <laughs> anyway, it could only go to an entity like the Friends. Um, and Bonnie worked really hard. Uh, they were very demanding on what they wanted in terms of information. She managed to pull it together. And we did make application for a grant um, aimed um, at working on the mental health of seniors and specifically the chit chat group. And our plan would be if we can obtain the funding to um, provide additional transportation for the chit chat group. Ooh, nice. um, so it had to go in on the 31st. We did make the deadline. Thank you very much to the friends for all that information that you provided. Um, and uh, in about 30 days, we should find out. That's exciting. Is there a charge for that? <coughs> for grant writing? I don't understand. You write it as a senior tax You mean, is she charging us? Okay. Oh, I thought you meant to apply for the grant. No. No, so Bonnie is a senior tax worker. Right. So she's doing it as part of her senior tax work. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Very, we, very skilled. Yes. We were you able to accommodate everybody that wanted a ride? Uh, in the this month, there were three that were three. turned away. Oh, I see. Yeah. The nice rides three. And usually those are because of scheduling problems. Um, yeah. Well, 138, 100, 118 cancellations, down from 138 the month before. But that's where the dispatcher just gets croaked. And you know what helped with that? That call program where they call and remind people. Dropped it 20 in one month, just yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Without that, the 514 couldn't have occurred. So I mean, that's great. Yeah. Yep. Um, they now have two full-time dispatchers that are handling the towns. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Well, Thank you. I, I, That's have you good. gotten any uh, complaints or compliments about the system? 
Oh, usually all I hear is complaints. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wonder how come, huh? People having to wait a long time, that kind of thing. Are we ready to move on to the outreach coordinator's report? Thank you. And I'm going to turn it over to you. All right. Thanks. Um, and Chris, on some of the scheduling um, difficulties with transportation, Pamela will, will refer it to me, and I did have a senior tax worker take people to Loaves and Fishes and to a medical appointment last month. So sometimes we're able to accommodate it that way. Um, but the month of October had a lot of education involved in it. Um, early October, I went to, um, uh, in Woburn, to a hoarding uh, meeting that focused a little bit on animal hoarding as well as other type of hoarding situations. And that was done at District Attorney Marion Ryan's office. And then later, um, in October 8th and 9th, I went to the MCOA conference, um, the Mass Council on Aging Conference. And I'd be happy to share any information with anybody that I had gotten there, um, went to a variety of um, educational um, workshops. So um, I wanted to thank Carrie Bremer from the Case Collaborative, like Barbara Cam had mentioned. Uh, we uh, had a, a nice intergeneral, intergenerational event down at the uh, diner where the students came with treats for the seniors and the seniors um, <coughs> well received the program and Carrie, her staff and students were very happy to be there. So thank you to everybody who helped make that so um, successful. Let's see, uh, busy of course um, with fuel assistance uh, is you know, continuing, support groups are continuing, and of course, you know, the, the chit chat's continuing. So I don't know if anyone has any specific questions. It was the age group for the um, children that came. The age group, they were teenagers with, um, with special needs, yes. and I believe they were um, four, um, 13 to 15 years old. Yeah. Raised an awareness for me. Tina, were any of the um, session materials from the MCOA, was that electronic? Uh, no, I have, what I have is, um, I can <coughs> scan some of these and, and send them over to you. I'll um, stop so by and just flip through it, because I don't want you to have to scan okay. the whole thing. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. You know, last year they did send, they set up a website, and they had some of the materials um, but I have not seen that. I've been looking for it, and I guess they just decided not to do that this year. Okay. I don't know if it was a cost factor or copyright. Your daughter. Any other questions for Tina? Did we have any programs rake and leaves? No. No? Okay, because I've had seniors ask me <laughs> that have leaves and they were wondering about it. Okay. They want to come to my house and help me? Yeah, <laughs> evidently. Bob, you have extra time? There is a Boy Scout troop that does it for one particular family in town, but that's their project each year and it's sort of, it's like a neighbor situation where the, um, the coordinator lives next door to a neighbor who needs it. And I know in July when the Catholic Hot Work Camp comes, I know that's not the best time to be raking leaves, but they do a lot of yard work at that time. And the Council of Churches, I know, wants to do a project in the spring in April, but I know that doesn't help with raking leaves right now. So I, I haven't had any specific requests. One of the towns had a October 25th, I think it was a Saturday, that they would have Boy Scouts or young people come and do it, but you would, they would have to, the homeowner would have to provide the bags to put the leaves in okay. and dispose of them. That's all they would do would be the raking, you know. So limited towns did different things, not much of everything. Yeah, that's an interesting point because you could see the leaves on walkways, on staircases, in particular driveways needing to get removed um, but you're not having requests I'm, I'm not I do we do have people who hire people and we have mm -hmm. plenty of resources that way to offer to people all oh, the landscape people are going crazy yeah. they're happy yeah 
Mm -hmm. I haven't had any requests either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except from you, Mary. Okay, we'll move over to Barbara. Uh, about senior diner and bingo monthly report. Um, the, the diner is fine. Um, you know, no change. Everything is. Uh, I hope the kitchen holds together for, <laughs> till we till we get moved. We have a every week. There's more. Every, one more disaster. Every week there's something. Now this week there's a, a pot under the sink because the drain is leaking. And we have a couple of burners on the stove gone and. You know, it's going gradually. Hope it lasts. <laughs> Any questions? What, uh, question, what, where are we at? Uh, I know they said it was in January, probably when they're going to do the kitchen there. Have we found any location to do the providing of service so, during that period? Let me read you what we <coughs> talked about at the beginning of the meeting. Okay. Um, the update by Pam said that uh, there was a meeting on the kitchen project and after meeting with officials to determine we are moving along with the project and the design is now in process. When the design is accepted, it is out for bids for 30 days and basically that means January and they will not you know, be able to connect with anybody to fill in until they find out what the actual dates are. February, March. <clears throat> okay, now we'll move on to Mary Catalano. Right. Okay, communications. Right. I first want to reiterate on Pam's wellness fair. I got many compliments that it was well put together and everything, and I want to repeat that was a job well done to Pam. In one of the towns, and I don't have the report with me now, and I thought it was interesting, put an article in the broadcaster for any retired school teacher, whatever tradesperson would like to come and share their knowledge, experience as a program for the seniors. That might be something new. I don't think we've had anyone like that. Science teacher, you name it, stamp <clears throat> collectors. There are many out there, okay. The other one is the Attorney General's Office has a statewide toll-free telephone hotline number to assist individuals with a wide range of elderly issues. I won't go into all the details. In the hallway, there are brochures from the Attorney General's Office, if anybody's interested. And what's it on? It, what is it on? Yeah. Okay wide range of elderly issues. Elderly issues, okay, thank you. Okay. The other one is Acton COA, which Pam had mentioned earlier, and it, I was surprised how few of us know that their real name is the Smith Cohen Senior Center. As of April, when they had an open house. How do you spell that? Right here. That's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was more than that interesting was the contributions by the Friends, which is long, Eagle Scouts, AARP, Junior Women's Club, uh, Garden Club, so on and so forth. It just appears that there are people out there that are willing to contribute to these senior centers regardless of where they are. The other one is sand buckets. I brought this uh, uh, up previously. Westford has an article in their broadcaster which says, are you in need of a free bucket of sand to be delivered to your home late this fall? Our volunteer bucket brigade hopes to beat the snow this year and make delivers, deliveries earlier. Register and they give the number and so forth. There are many seniors. I know there is sand available and people in Littleton can go and get it, but there are many seniors oh, that can't you know, and it's Mary, heavy. 
I think that would be a great program for the board to take up and do to prepare the buckets and to deliver them. I think that would be a great program for you guys to take up. Because a lot of seniors, it's precocious for them to walk. Because I know the sand's available. I know it is. They, you all drive, so there wouldn't be any problem with delivery. It'd just be a question of getting the buckets. Where would we get the buckets from and who would do it? Was this something I thought maybe the highway would like that job? No. No, I've or already the fire talked department to them about that. in their no, spare no. time. No. I don't have any capacity for that. I've talked to both of them about it last year. But I the board could do it. Well, why can't you use the tax program to to do that? If you guys organize it, I'd be happy to give you a couple of tax workers. Yeah. I know well, by Well, the thing is uh what side pail buckets are you talking about? I don't about? know. Maybe this telephone number with Westford, someone could call and ask them about them. They do, oh, I think it's their main number. Ask what, how they handle it. Who does That's it? where they what? get their buckets from. Why oh. don't you find out, Mary, and come back to the board? No, I can't. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, what is interesting is in front of the historical building on, uh, what is it, Stevens Street? In other winters, I've seen buckets of sand, but I don't know who gets it or helps themselves to it. It's a good question. You know? Well, I got a tight I, schedule here, but I'll, I'll try. I'll take the number down here and see if I can. Uh, see if I can. Well, you make, can uh, take the whole thing, George. I have two of them. Thank yeah, you. Contact. Thank you very much. Yeah. I say no because I spend. I get my exercise. Oh, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Taking my <laughs> husband to the doctor oh, three man. times a week. I mean. I was just meaning you could call the town and find out the answers to where they got the buckets, where they Right, got. right. Yeah, that would be nice, I think. Oh, um, is there any of the questions? Oh. I know the sand's available from the highway department. If we can get access to buckets, I know I've got at least two senior tax workers that would be happy <clears> to do that. But George, you raise a really good question on what size, because you don't want anything that's too big. Yeah. But I'd be curious to know where they get their buckets from. Yep. Yeah. They may get them donated, so it would be worth a call. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, George. Great. And then I'll let you know, Mayor, and then you can tell them. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're, we're, we might have snow before our next board meeting. Did you right hear about the 18 the inches in March? Or in, See, uh, they would Michigan? like to know so it could go in the broadcast. Oh, yeah. you're already late for this month. Yeah. It will yeah. be the next one. But it could be an addition. Winter will hold off for you. I'll try to find out. Yeah. Um, Early. My last article is, out of curiosity, on the front page of the uh, broadcaster under contents, number three says trips, page three. And I get calls, they're looking on page three. Is that the error that is deliberately put in there? Because there's no trips in there. I tell them to call you. Last month we had a trip in. It was the last trip that we've It was on page four then last month. Oh, I'm sorry if it was on the wrong page. That, no, no, that no, 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 this the month, you know, was three. But if they looked at the trip, it said trips on the front, but there were no trips inside is what That's meant. right. I doesn't believe, make sense. I believe that we had the last trip. Um, the Could company that we've been working error. with doesn't uh -huh. have anything going on. Mm -hmm. Well, the point was that it, the front page in the index said there was a trip page. But that was wasn't. an error on the basis, on fine. the part of the editor. Okay. I'll see yeah. that she's fired. So now you can tell oh, no, them. No, wait, I can't fire yeah. her because we need somebody until we, to. Until we, until, <laughs> we have, until we have trips again, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't know what's going on. The company that had been doing the trips didn't send us any catalogs this year. Um, and we haven't had anyone sign up for a trip in months. Interesting. This is right. Yeah, uh, no, the other one, uh, Best of Times. And uh, I put out an appeal to the senior tax workers asking if there was someone who wanted to work on coordinating trips, and I got no responses. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I, I also understand, well, I understand that other towns yes, that are so. also advertising and when trips, I get the body, that they're having the same problem. Those trips are not running. Mm -hmm. I make People are not signing up for those trips. Box. Mm -hmm. I let her know what others are doing. I move that the reports be accepted by the board. Second. 
Louise? Oh, I move that the support request be accepted by the board. Okay. Do we have a second? A second. We got a second. All right. All in favor? All right. Yeah. Okay. I want to let you know the next meeting is December 8th. And if you have any agenda topics, please get them to Marge Payne. And I want to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. And I move to adjourn the meeting. I move second? that we adjourn. Gene, second. second. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Have a good day.